Life getting too peaceful? A new Cold War will fix that. Proxy battles and a new arms race. The confrontation is growing between the U.S. and China. This is China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Good news for all of you who thought the world was getting too peaceful. Steve. The U.S. State Department has approved a possible $8 billion fighter jet sale to Taiwan. Don't let the headline fool you. It's not a single $8 billion jet, decked out with leather seats and a solid gold interior, which would make it too heavy to fly. It's actually up to 66 new aircraft, most likely Lockheed Martin F-16 fighter jets, as well as 75 General Electric engines. This comes only one month after the State Department approved a $2 billion arms sale to Taiwan. The Trump administration has proven to be a staunch supporter of the island nation. The Chinese Communist Party, of course, does not consider it a nation. They claim it belongs to China and has threatened to conquer Taiwan by force if necessary. As of last year, the Chinese military had 2,000 ballistic missiles pointed at Taiwan. Of course, U.S. military support has played a big role in preventing an invasion. And just last week, Taiwan increased military spending to the highest it's been in a decade. Obviously, the Chinese Communist Party is not happy about the U.S. weapons sales. The Chinese regime is threatening sanctions on U.S. businesses if the deal goes through. Congress has 30 days to object to the deal, but they're probably not going to. Because no matter what differences Democrats and Republicans may have, both sides can agree on one thing, standing up to China. The good news is, no matter what differences the U.S. and China may have, both sides can agree on one thing. We're in another Cold War. If you ask China, the U.S. started it. If America's outdated views don't change, if they're forever stuck in a Cold War mentality, I'm afraid to say that Sino-U.S. relations will continue to face problems. And if you ask the U.S., China started it. By their own terms, and what Xi Jinping himself enunciates, what they're waging against us is fundamentally a Cold War. A Cold War not like we saw during the, the Cold War, but a Cold War by definition a country that exploits all avenues of power, licit and illicit, uh, public and private, economic, military, um, to undermine the standing of your rival relative to you know, your own standing without resorting to conflict. And if you ask China and Russia, they say the U.S. is starting an arms race. See, at the beginning of this month, the U.S. withdrew from the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces, or INF, treaty. It was an agreement between the U.S. and the Soviet Union that prohibited flight testing or possessing intermediate-range ground-launched missiles. But Russia kept violating it, and China never signed it, so it was only the U.S. that was out those ground-launched missiles. Until this week's missile test. That missile was similar to the nuclear-capable Tomahawk cruise missile. So even though Russia and China are saying that the U.S. is starting a new arms race, it's more like the U.S. is playing catch-up just like our pals in North Korea. North Korea has fired two projectiles off its eastern coast, and this time it says it's shutting down peace talks with South Korea, too. And you thought the world was too peaceful, Steve. And now it's time for me to answer a question from a fan who supports the show on the crowdfunding website, Patreon. LT Stravern asks, does anyone know just how much money China has flooded into their economy to try and keep things running smoothly, followed by just how much longer they can continue to do such acts before things crash? That's a good question. It's a little hard to know for sure since the entire Chinese economy is very opaque. I mean, for years, what looked like GDP growth and economic production was local officials building unnecessary infrastructure. But we do know the number is at least hundreds of billions of dollars. At the beginning of the year, in a single day, the Chinese central government poured $83 billion into the economy. A few months before that, it was over $100 billion. Of course, the real question is, what is this going to do to the Chinese economy overall? These massive injections of cash can keep the economy going in the short term, but sooner or later, there's going to be a reckoning. But no one knows quite when that will be. It seems like the Communist Party's strategy right now is to try and wait out the Trump administration and hope that a new U.S. president is elected in 2020 who will go back to business as usual. But like I said, China is one of the few bipartisan issues right now. The Chinese regime might find that no matter who wins in 2020, they lose.
Thanks for your question. And thanks to everyone watching. We could not make this show if it weren't for your support, either on Patreon or just sharing the show with your friends and family. So, thanks for watching China Uncensored. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.